Hello, I'm Paul Richter. I'm the breeder for General Mills, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about our breeding program for organics. So General Mills is interested in satisfying three different customers, the farmer, our mills, and the consumer. So for the farmer, we want things that have high yield, good drought resistance, good lodging resistance, and good stress tolerance resistance. For the mills, we want a high percent growth. Growth is the inside of the kernel. That's what we make Cheerios out of. The hull gets burnt. We want to have good size distribution. We want to have large kernels in order to easily separate the barley and the wheat. We want to have things that have good, easy dehulling. Dehulling is a separating of the hull away from the groat. If it is tough to do, that really reduces our throughput because it has to cycle through our system. And we want good flaking ease, that we want things that roll easily without breaking for our Nature Valley granola bars. For the consumer, and I apologize, you can't see part of this slide. We want high soluble fiber, beta-glucan, which reduces cholesterol, high total dietary fiber, which is good for just general health, low fat content so that we can satisfy the heart healthy claim, and high protein. So I'm going to talk about our breeding locations that are important to you, the North Dakota farmer. So we have four locations I want to talk about and share some data from um, Selby, South Dakota, which is just south of the border, here in Carrington, Minot, and new this year, Langdon, North Dakota. So we work closely with SDSU and with NDSU to make these trials happen. So we have several different types of trials that we do. We do population trials. We do the variety selection, which is my main emphasis. And then we also do OP intercropping trials, which Tom Rabe will be talking to you about in another presentation. And then just generally, um, organic, ag organic agronomy and related research that Steve does. Here I want to talk a little bit about some results that we got from last year. I'm going to talk about some non-NDSU varieties. Um, that's part of, of what our my program can bring is, is a little bit looking at some other varieties uh, that, that might fit the bill for, for you. Um, so there's some new ones here. In fact, I'm not sure. You may not be familiar with a lot of these. Dion is a, is a Minnesota variety that's been around for a while, and it's a good variety. Um, but there's here's some new ones. Hayden is the number one variety in South Dakota. It's a SCSU release. Uh, it's, it's also a good one. It's a little bit early, perhaps, for North, a lot of North Dakota. As you get north, you can get away with later material. AAC Douglas, the highest yielding variety on this chart, is an interesting variety. It's from Canada. It was released just this last year, and it, it's looking real promising. It's early enough, and it, it has some, some good characteristics. Uh, CS Camden is also a Canadian variety that has some acres in North Dakota. That, that, that is good for us for, for milling. So here is the U.S. results. And then the, the one on the bottom, the 2015 32, 32, that is a General Mills variety. Um, I like it because it's early. It definitely works for South Dakota. The other thing, as you'll notice, it has really good crown rust resistance. Um, crown rust is, a, is an issue. Um, and there is, so we need to have resistance, especially in an organic system. And it has, uh, you can't see it on the, on the slide because I'm kind of covering it up, but it has 4,8 beta-glucan, which is, is really good. That, that's what we need. So, you know, um, Hayden and Dion are 4,4% 4, 4 beta-glucan, which is a little bit on, on the edge. We like to have things a little higher. So, yeah, so in organic systems, um, we can't spray fungicides, so we need to have resistance to pathogens. The three main pathogens are bacterial blight, septoria blotch, and crown rust. Bacterial blight and septoria, while they're around, they don't seem to be 
economically important, at least not as economically important as Crown Run. As you can see on this slide here, um, so this is a slide a few years ago here in South Dakota with a Dion, which is resistant, uh, versus horsepower, uh, which is not. And the, the horsepower uh, plot this year, uh, the year that was shown here, had zero yield. It did not, it did not make maturity. So finally, I want to talk a little bit more about crown rust management, and and we're doing a lot of things to make sure that we have different resistances in, in many varieties that have different resistances. And to that end, we've General Mills personally um, supports breeding efforts at, in Canada and at SDSU as well as our own. And we, we're we're constantly screening other people's material as well. Um, we want to, we plant new resistant varieties, and when we do that, when we have resistant varieties, um, you have higher yield, you have higher test weight, and you have less lodging, which makes so you get the crop that you've got out there. And so there's an industry initiative called um, the Oat Rust Initiative that, that basically encompasses the industry players as well as um, universities such as NDSU um, to figure out um, and make sure that, that we have good oat rust resistance. That is what I had. Um, I wish I could answer any questions. If you have any questions, my email address is there on the screen or you can call 612-518-8277. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.